Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to mock up a t-shirt with a design on it. A lot of times if you are sent a design and say it's in a square like this, just pretend this is a masterpiece here in green. Um, this is actually in a square. It's a square JPEG or it's a square vector piece of artwork. And you have to somehow make the client understand how that's going to look on a t-shirt. And uh, it's, so it's a useful skill to be able to kind of take the design you're given and mock it up really quick on a shirt. I'm going to show you a quick method that I like to use. Um, the advantages of this method are, one, you're doing it on a photographic picture of a shirt. Um, so you have more control and more management over the type of garment that you're mocking it up on. You can do it for a wide variety of garments. You can create stock templates for your t-shirts. Um, you're not reliant on either industry garments. You know, anytime you get a sample garment in, you can shoot it. Um, I recommend get, actually getting a photo area in your shop or in your house or wherever you're doing this kind of work um, so you can control the lighting and do good photographs. In this case, I didn't have that. So I did a kind of amateur photograph, which is uh, off my iPhone, and I shot this shirt and just popped it in here. So I'm going to do this real quick and just kind of mock this up for you guys so that you can see this is what you do with a bad photograph. Like uh, this, this one's really out of gamut. This is actually supposed to be a blue shirt. I'm just kind of spinning it around here. Hold the control key and it locks it to 90 degrees there. I'm going to shrink it down so it fits on the on the artboard here. It's like an eight and a half by 11 artboard open. And you'll notice, yeah, this is a really bad photograph because two reasons. One is the colors are way off, right? This is supposed to be a blue shirt. It's supposed to be like a denim blue color or like a marine blue color. And I think the color got thrown off a little bit by this background. So we got this busy background and you got a shirt that's kind of wrinkly so it doesn't look that good. We wouldn't want to mock something on this because the client would be like, uh, it looks terrible no matter what it is. But we can do a quick job of kind of cleaning it up. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, if I'm going a little fast, you can always slow this down or watch it again or, you know, uh, repeat it a couple times. Now, what I'm going to do quickly now is I'm, I got to get rid of this background and I got to clean this shirt up. So I'm going to do that as fast as I can for you guys. I'm going to click on the freehand tool here. I'm using CorelDRAW 5. It will work in all versions of CorelDRAW 5 up to 7, no problem. Um, so I just click here, and then what I'm going to do is just, I'm, I'm not going to do a real careful version here because I want to get this done. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm double clicking kind of quick. Here I have the mouse click effect on, which I know is a little annoying, but it allows you to see how many times and kind of how I'm clicking at this. And I'm just kind of going around the outside of the shirt, but I want to clean it up. So I'm kind of create some sharp edges. I'm going to get these wrinkles out. And I'm going to kind of come up here and cut it. Now when I drag down, it automatically drags down. I'm going to kind of stop right here. I'm going to go there. And I'm just trying not to get any of the background. That's the goal here when I'm creating this. And I want to, again, I want to kind of shorten it here because I want to get rid of that extra kind of frumpy looking part of the shirt. I'm going to go up here. I'm just going to pretend there's a seam there. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And you can play with this too. And you'll see it once you get this up. Now, once I click and finally click on where I first started, it creates a solid square, right? And you can see that outline right there. If I was to fill it, it would fill with something. I'm going to undo that. Control Z. So now I created this square inside of my, on top of my photograph, inside here. And I'm going to use the power clip effect. So I go effects, power clip, right here. Okay. Now you got to select your your uh, your bitmap on advanced versions you can also right click uh, and you can say you know add to power clip on this version of Corel you have to do it the slow way um, but you can do place and slide container and you click right here and now it forced what it basically did was took that took that photo and pushed it into this object that I just created now I'm gonna get rid of the outline because we don't need a black outline and you can see well it looks better right it looks better. Color's still off. My edges are a little bit sharp. It looks a little phony or fake or whatever. But there's a quick way to fix that. So you double click on your shape tool here. Double click on that. Go to your curves tool. And then I click convert to curve. When I double clicked on the shape tool, that automatically selected all the nodes that I created. And then when I click the curve tool, I converted them all to curves. And now I want to round these out a little bit. And a quick way to kind of round these curves out is to come in with your shape tool and just double click around your corners and you'll see and then I delete the sharp point in the middle I just use the delete key you see how that creates a rounded corner and that's kind of more realistic and it looks better on this garment I can also grab this now that it's a curve and kind of move it you know and arc it a little bit and if I have extra nodes that I don't want in here I can delete those you know and kind of edit this thing a little bit easier um, now if I have a node in here somewhere that I don't want I'll delete that and then I can kind of arc the whole 
shirt just a little bit. Kind of creates a more realistic sleeve. Here, same sort of thing. You know, maybe I want a little bit less of a sharp um, underarm here, right there, and I'll zoom out. I'm not going to do too much because you guys get the idea. Um, I don't want to spend this whole video, but you can do it real quick. Double click, double click, grab, delete. Same thing here. And you could make those more rounded if you want by pulling the handles. Um, there's, you know, go in here and click this. You pull these handles and make them a little less more smoother or sharper or whatnot, but uh, I find that, you know, just a little bit of a, a softness goes a long way, and obviously on the bottom here, these edges, you know, for realism's sake, you wouldn't want those to be really sharp either. Um, delete, and then last one here, and we'll get moving on, because we got to put a design on this thing, and delete. And, of course, you always want to save your work, so we'll just save it as shirt. Save it. And then, you know, sometime in the future, if I needed a shirt effect, I could pop this on there. Now, a couple things. Obviously, this is an ugly color. Um, I'm not sure how your monitor is calibrated, but mine makes it look like it's almost gray. And it should be blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the power clip to edit it. Now, the quick key way to do that is to hold the control key and click and click again. And then you go into the power clip. The slow way would be to go effect, power clip, and you're going to say edit contents. And you basically get the same way. So I'm in here on this shirt. Now i got to edit this bitmap. Now there's some tools in Corel 5. There's some more powerful ones in 6 and 7 for editing bitmaps. Um, I just do it quick here. Go uh, bitmap, um, effects. You want to go effects, adjust, tone curve. So effects, adjust, tone curve. You're going to bring your tone curve up. Now if you want something to be more blue, it's a little counterintuitive here. Because what you have to do is you have to bump things like the red. You know, you got to bump the red a little bit in the mid-tone and that actually makes the red you see how it gets a little bit greener but it gets away from the gray and then you can also you go into these channels not the RGB because that'll just make it darker light but these channels and blue you can kind of make what you're basically doing is replacing black in the image with blue here so as I move the handles up and you'll see you can kind of preview it um, here and you'll see how that got bluer right so I want a little bit more blue and you can play with it a little bit depending on how much time you have. But here, we just kind of want to make this a blue. And that's really kind of what the shirt color was. So um, if you needed to be really accurate, obviously you would need to shoot better photos to begin with. And, <laughs> you know, um, but even the best of photos, sometimes you just, you still have to kind of monkey things around. Um, now I kind of tweak the, the handles there. So if you get if you get all out of whack, you just hit reset. And then you can go back, you know, and kind of quickly grab these aren't as, as subtle and kind of easy to use in some ways as Photoshop, but they, they can get the job done, you know. I and mean, you can see how they get out of whack easy. So um, I'm just going to do a quick, quick adjustment here. I'm going to move the blue up to where we had it. I'm going to say preview there. And that should be okay. And then I'll move the red, um, not the RGB, but the red down. And that should hopefully give me relatively blue. That's a little bit aqua, but we'll go so we get kind of a more of a royal bluish here now if I wanted a true royal I would probably have to have to monkey with this a lot more you know um, to get it to be uh, you know exactly right so if you go one way and it doesn't work then you just go the other way and say oh well let's see um, maybe I can make it more blue this way yeah, that's pretty good let's just take a look okay and then I'm gonna click and then I have more of a blue image now, you can also go on the internet and pull an actual royal blue shirt, bring it in here, um, and then you can use that as a reference to kind of create your royal blue. Now, next, I want to bring in my design. So, I need to put this on a design real quick, or a design on here to send to a customer. So, I'm going to bring that in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take it off of here. Now, one of the things that's nice about Corel Draw is you can just drag your designs in, or you can import them. Import is control I, drag in your design in. I can just click the design, I can drag it off, and then I can drop it in here. Okay? And uh, that works well if you have your Windows Explorer open at the same time as you're working on CorelDRAW. It's a faster way to import sometimes. I use it for things like crosshairs and uh, other things I need to get in really quick, and I don't want to sit here and go, Control, Import, File, Import, stuff like that. Um, now, here's my design. And you can see, okay, this was the way we laid it out. Now, we're going to put it on this color shirt. Now, the colors don't match, so that's a minor issue. But first, we're going to have to size it. Now, one thing that's useful here is I'm going to go ahead and change into wireframe mode, Alt V W, and then I hit the space bar. I'm in wireframe mode now. You'll notice when you're in a when you have a power clip here, it just shows you the outside edge of the power clip when you're in wireframe mode. It does not show you the photo in here. 
which is good or bad depending on how you like to work. Now I'm going to pull this in. Now one thing unique about this design, if you're not familiar, this might look a little fancy, but there is a bitmap or a, um, a distress filter on top of this design. And I'll show you kind of how that works just real quick as we lay it in here. But um, So I'm kind of placing this on the shirt right now, and we'll just see how that lays out. So I did that in wireframe just so I can kind of see how it fits. I'm going to go back. I'll V, E for enhanced mode or view enhanced. Okay, now I placed another shirt. Now that doesn't look very real, right? And we're kind of going, nah, that doesn't work, but we get rid of it. We get rid of pieces we don't need. So you un undelete, and as quickly as you can, you want to kind of get rid of things you don't need. So you get rid of the background, and now you see, oh, these, you know, these colors maybe don't work all that great. But that can be useful because you can kind of tweak them kind of quick. Now what we're going to do here is you're going to move this distress filter off. This is a distress filter I just kind of created out of some grungy pieces and you're gonna look at how this lays out here now this was transparent so that's kinda of nice the shirt color comes through sometimes you have to change the color um, in Corel Draw 5 and what you can do is you can just take your color picker here and you can try to grab the color of the shirt now one thing to be aware of in a power clip sometimes it's difficult using this tool at least in Corel Draw 5 you see how it's running CMYK there see it says CMYK in those numbers sometimes that's not accurate and to really get an accurate pull from this color you have to actually go into the power clip it's a little bit of a bug but you go into the power clip and then I create a shape and then I can do this and then see how it's RGB that's what we want so you click that and then you fill it and now this is an accurate pull from the shirt you can see how that's kind of close it's kind of close in tone to that and then you just copy it delete it and then you go back out of the power clip let me get off the edge of the page here hit control exit and then you can control V paste it on and then you have your color that's a workaround for this you know not working and that would be if I had to fill it there and what I'll use this for here is because I want to fill these fonts here so that they're kind of just a tone just off the shirt because they don't really match the shirt and what I'll do is I'll select them both um, and select that and then I'll darken them up just a little bit so they're like a shade darker than the shirt. And I'll just do that by dragging here. So I clicked them both and then I clicked the fill tool that brought off the uniform fill box here. I drag it down. I say OK and that darkens them up a little bit. So it's kind of nice. And then this drop shadow here we want to just match the shirt because it's supposed to be the shirt falling out. So we're just going to use that little reference that I created there. Click it and see if I can get on it here without getting too close in. Maybe not. Oh there's a sometimes if there's an outline you have to zoom in more. Um, with your picker tool so let me let me get my move my box over here and then we can zoom in real quick almost done guys hang in there go click here click the box then we can get that and then get the outline too and so now you see it kind of fades into the shirt background the color tone matches up and last but not least actually I shouldn't have deleted that control Z because I might want that color for my bitmap right here because I want to knock parts of the shirt out with this bitmap because if I just use the bitmap as it is it's gonna be the old color and you can see it shows up too much so what I need there is I click here grab the color and then as I cross the edge of that bitmap you can see I just click and then that makes the inside outline of this bitmap um, just the outline becomes these little pieces that knock it out and I can show you that here so that's a bitmap I'll I'll right click on it and it duplicates it over here um, but you see this bitmap if I filled it say I filled it with yellow see there's no fill and then the outline is what the colors of the pieces are and you get that from doing a monochrome bitmap at a halfway decent resolution so I'm gonna delete that and now we have our mock-up that's actually on the shirt and so you can see how that works actually on an actual shirt you create a JPEG of this you know grab the whole thing even though it's a power clip it'll turn into a JPEG you can do that by either converting it to a bitmap um, you know if you're gonna send it I wouldn't go much more than 200 you're gonna want it to be RGB um, you don't need transparent background and you can just say okay and then this is gonna convert it to a nice bitmap that I can send to a client get him to approve this and sell some shirts and just make sure if you do convert to a bitmap obviously control Z and undo it so you don't save over your work um, I hope that's useful for you guys and of course you know save your shirt itself for later use um, if you want more videos like this make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel 
Um, and check out my website, ScreenPrintingArtist.com. I'm going to have some uh, classes on there starting soon, and I look forward to seeing you.